the first animal that she saw was the dog. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. How can you pack your gear up and walk away and say, no, it's too hard? You can't. Well, they normally think it's the, the baby pram um, until they hear the meowing. I kind of thought we'd seen almost everything here at the Bondi Clinic. No, we've never had a lion before. This week's number five. Hey, ease up, ease up. That's not what we want. Today, I want to show you one of my all-time favourite birds here at the Australian Reptile Park. It's the proud, strutting boss of the rainforest, the magnificent cassowary. Love the watermelon. Bit of squash. <laughs> You're fussy on your fruits, aren't you? In the cassowary world, females lay the eggs, but the fellas do all the work. Sitting on the nest, then looking after the chicks. Sounds very domestic. But cassowaries are not an animal you want to mess with. Now, they're really powerful. About the same force as a male red kangaroo. Have a look at the power in those legs that incisor in the middle, they jump up to about chest height and then rake down with enormous force, potentially splitting whichever thread it was open. Call me crazy, but I'm about to step into an enclosure with one of these awesome, powerful birds. Good morning, chookies. I'm not going in with the big fellas. No way. The babies are more my size. Come on, you want a bit of tucker? Here you go, mate. Love your grapes. This little guy is Foghorn, and his mate is a chicken called Leghorn. We rescued Foghorn from a nest where all the other eggs were infertile. Dad was staying on the nest, and he just wasn't looking after this little guy. The chicken teaches him how to eat, which the cassowary didn't know when he was born. He's also company, and just teaches him bird social skills for later in life. He's gonna need those if he's ever gonna breed in captivity. And if a chook can teach him a thing or two, I reckon I can as well. Today I'm being dad, and I'm taking right. Foghorn for a walk. Thanks, Kaz. I put him down. He's only two months old, so he's still just getting his feet. He's quite clumsy. Come on, mate. There you go. That's a boy. Hey, over this way. Come on. You stubborn little fella. Come on. Hey, down here. Come on. Let's go. You see what he's doing? Staying right there in about my legs is exactly what he'd do in the wild with his father. It's security. I'm safety. So he's going to stay right in close here and just tuck around. You right, mate? Well, look out. Can you imagine poor old dad cassowary? He's got five or six of these little guys all around his legs at once. This guy's such a character. Off the path. Hang on, back again. Come on. Here I am, little fella. Come on, mate. Here's your buddy. Here's Chook. Happy to see each other? That's the fun bit. Now for something Foghorn absolutely hates, the weigh-in. Come on, mate. Hey, 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 settle down. Sit. Have, a, have a look at that. That's called playing dead. A lot of animals do it, and it's a last resort. When they're threatened or when they're restrained, this is what they'll do. Look at that. See, plenty of life still. And there he goes. Back into it. Now, if he was grabbed by a big snake in the wild or something like that, this is what he'd do. Okay, so it's time to get away. And the way that we do that is just to pop him into the bag. Nice and dark for him and it just, it just settles him. That's the way, mate. Won't be long. The reason that we weigh him is just, hey, easy, mate, easy. It's just for a routine health check, we need to know that he's gaining weight, not losing weight, and that we don't have any health problems associated with that. 2.3 kilos. So he's up 300 grams in a week. It's all good. At this rate, it won't be long before Foghorn's two metres tall. While he's still a little tacker, I can be his dad. Come on, let's go. Number four. 
right now, I'm on my way to an animal farm. I've just received a call from the manager there who's discovered a lamb dumped in a box on a front doorstep. Now, it sounds like it's got a broken leg. If they have serious injuries, they're often regarded as being totally expendable. So he's just so lucky someone actually cares. Hey, Lisa, how are you going? Hi, not too bad, thanks. So where is this lamb? He's just in here. The lamb is just four weeks old and in serious trouble. He's got quite a nasty fracture of, his, of the mid shaft of his femur. Okay. Everything's just crumbled in the middle of it. Yeah, not attached properly. Now he's either been kicked or he's been crushed over or crushed in some way. Yeah. In terms of fractures that he could get, it's just about the worst. If nothing was done about the leg, then the sad reality is that the lamb would have had to have been put to sleep. He's a stoic little guy, he's tough, he just <laughs> doesn't show a lot of pain. Mm, that's it. How can you just pack your gear up and walk away and say, no, nah, it's too hard? You can't. You look sad. I am a bit. He's um, a little sweetheart. I shouldn't get attached, but I do. Mm. We do need to talk about a name too. Leroy. Leroy. As in Leroy Brown. <laughs> Baddest lamb in the whole damn town. Aren't you? Leroy. I think Leroy is cute. See Good luck. Later. Thank you. Thanks. I'd love to say that I'm confident, but the reality is we don't fix too many fractures in lambs, especially none that feel as bad as this one does. We don't know that we can actually help him. It's done. Lisel, Leroy, Leroy, Lisel. Back at the Bondi Clinic. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, buddy. Chris okay. is taking x rays of Leroy yeah. to find out if his shattered back leg can be saved. X ray. If it can't, the young lamb would struggle to survive out on a farm. Leroy would have to be put down. So, that's obviously what his femur is meant to look like. That's on his right side there. On his left side, when we're looking from above, you can see the bone comes out, it's been fractured, and now it's up like that. I think it's fixable. Mm. I'm sure it's fixable. Leroy needs major surgery on his damaged leg. A pin will need to be inserted to hold the shattered femur together. This is uncharted territory. We do this on dogs. We've never done it before on a lamb. Who knows how it's gonna end up. But first, it's bath time to make sure any contamination on Leroy's skin is removed. There's a label here, actually. It says, um, do not tumble dry as well, so... Thanks for the shower. If bacteria gets into an open wound during an operation, it could be fatal. Nice and dry, Leroy. Leroy also needs to be fed. The lamb is seriously underweight. That's it. Nothing more. The only nagging worry I have is that we may fix the fracture here, but if there's been significant nerve damage, then the function may never return. In fact, is Leroy has to be able to walk if he's to go back to that animal farm. Otherwise, it just doesn't look so good. So that's the fracture there. You can see it's quite an explosive fracture. It looks as though it's just blown the, the two fragments apart. Chris needs to pin the two fragments together. It looks a little bit grotesque, but it's the first anchor point that enables us to bring the top bit in line with the bottom bit of bone. Operating on a lamb instead of a dog or cat is causing some problems. Chris is struggling to judge the right amount of anaesthetic for Leroy. We've had a few scares where it's just goes so deep all of a sudden that you've got to really check that he's breathing. He's still got a heartbeat, but he likes to hold his breath for quite a while. He's a bit of a daredevil under anaesthetic and likes to scare us. How's he going there, Jules? He's good. It's all right. The colours are right. Stable. See those two bones are aligned now? We've got the top fragment of the femur meeting the bottom fragment. Looks pretty good. That is a relief. 
That was tricky. That was really tricky. Now it's about rest and rehabilitation, but there are no guarantees that Leroy's leg will heal well enough for him to return to the farm. Rest up. No, 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 stay, stay off. No, no, I don't want you to use the leg just yet. No, see, it doesn't work yet. The next few days will give us the answer about whether he goes back to his mates or whether the future doesn't look as bright as we'd like. Hey, Leroy. Leroy. What's all the noise about? Leroy's rehabilitation is continuing at the clinic, but his badly damaged leg still needs to show significant improvement. Sorry, buddy. And while Leroy's coping, Chris is well aware the little lamb has no future unless he makes a complete recovery. My biggest concern for Leroy right now is the risk of nerve damage. Without physiotherapy, he may never really walk normally again. Leroy, come on. And as strange as it might seem, walking around the clinic and following me is actually part of his physio. What are you doing there? Slippery floors? You know why they're slippery? Because you wee on them. That's why. Leroy and I have certainly become a little attached, yeah. My only concern is that whether Leroy now considers himself sheep or human. I think it might be time to head home for the weekend and maybe even hit the beach. It's a new breed, it's a Lambradoodle. <laughs> is it? There aren't many of them around. <laughs> you reckon she got it worked out? <laughs> no, no, really. <laughs> See those little waves in the water? That's called chop. Next time you hear the word chop, run away as fast as you can. That's my life advice to you. Hey, Leroy. Leroy. What do you reckon? Running to your milk now, Leroy. I've got a feeling he just signed his own release papers. Leroy is heading back to his mates at the farm after a successful operation on his shattered back leg. Hey, Lisa. Yeah? Well, look who it is. Come on, Leroy. Come on, buddy. See spots here? That's what you are. Hmm? You're a sheep, Leroy. My only regret is that we washed him before we brought him out here. I think we should have roughened him up. If you haven't noticed, he glows. He's so luminescent white. See you, champ. I've really been fighting, forming that bond, but he's Leroy Brown. He's part of the family. Where are you going? Leroy? Leroy? I'm sorry, buddy. You gotta stay here with me now. It's your new mum. It's gonna be hard driving off. This week's number three. Scott, look at you and see what's gonna go on. See what's gonna go on with the baby. Here we go. Here we go. Next day. Hey, John, how you going? <laughs> Scott's first appointment is American John and his much loved 17 year old Sadie. Let's go on through and get her out of this wet weather. Hello, old There girl. we are. Hey, baby. Hello, sweetheart. John absolutely loves his cat and he gives no excuses. And I think it's fantastic. Good girl. There we go. I know, you're so good. Well done. I do find it reassuring in Britain that I'm not looked on as the eccentric cat guy. It's uh, the British madness about their animals is dovetails in greatly, wonderfully with how I feel. Okay, gorgeous. Let's have a little look at you now. Yeah, good girl. 18, you said, didn't you? 18 next month. What sort of uh, events do we think we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna organize for her? Well, certainly her first pint. <laughs> Take the pram into the uh, the pub. I'm sure they'll love that. And, uh, 
Yeah, what kind of reaction do you get when you bring the cat pram into a public space? Well, they normally think it's the, the baby pram um, until they hear the meowing, and then, then we get quite quite the look. Oh, oh hey, hey, that? who's your friend? Oh, I thought you had a baby. No, it's a cat. Oh. I see, uh-oh. Oh, he doesn't, yeah, he's not best friendly to... <laughs> oh, that's okay. All right, see you guys. Bye, Bye now. There's some nice puppies. John and his wife Tracy moved from the United States to the UK two years ago. The pram thing came about when we first moved over. We didn't have a car, and in America you have to have a car for everything. So we didn't we didn't think about how we were going to get Sadie from home to the vet. There you go, hey sweetie. He struts up here, Richmond Hill, with his cat in a pram. He's loud and proud. He's out there. I love my cat, and she loves me. Good on him. Don't take her out too often because she usually thinks she's coming here. Come on now. <laughs> no offense. But today, John is worried about his aging sweetheart. John, I tell you what, she is looking thin, isn't she? Yeah, she's just feeling more and more bony. Yeah, I can feel your ribs. It was only two years ago that Sadie's sibling, Peanut, died from kidney disease. Her brother cat, Peanut, had the same noticeable signs of the, the weight loss. And we noticed with his haunches getting skinnier and, and the back getting ricketier. And so we saw that happening with Sadie and we decided to, to bring her in, see what you have to say about it. Sean, what I can tell you about the weight that we've found today is that she is 2.5 kilograms. She has been up to four kilograms uh, back three years ago. Uh, that's a huge amount of weight for us. So you are losing nearly half of our body weight. Uh, so for a cat, uh, it's, it certainly shows that there is definitely some, some problems afoot. We do need to look into this pretty seriously. It's been steadily dropping, but it's really dropped this time around. So I really do want to get to grips as to why. And obviously she is not the biggest fan of the vet practice. So we take that into account when we hear a slightly higher heart rate, but her heart rate is pretty fast. Yeah. I think in this instance, she's showing fairly classic signs of a, an old lady, an old yeah. cat. There's a number of different things that this could possibly be. First thing we'll be doing today is taking a blood sample and we'll be looking at not only kidney function, but also her thyroid level as well. And the other thing is just checking her blood pressure because when a cat has got high uh, thyroid level uh, of high thyroid hormone, it does drive up their blood pressure and that we need to, to determine now because in future, if we start to treat it and the blood pressure drops, we might see its effect on kidneys. When we see a relationship as close as John and Sadie, I don't want to be the bringer of bad news. Sweet thing. I work at home as a computer programmer. I am with her 24 hours a day. And from the time I wake up, she's spent the, the night in bed. I have to carry her on my shoulders to get ready in the morning, put that pot of coffee on, come downstairs, and then she's in my lap all day. She demands love pretty much 24 seven. So it's certainly a very hands-on relationship, um, but it's one I think that she really enjoys. She really enjoys just having me there all the time. So, so let me get this right. Oh yeah. You work from home. Yes. With your cat all day. Yes. The cat has a cat pram that you bring to the vet clinic and now I find out that she actually is your bedfellow. Bedfellow, your, yes. Does your wife at all feel jealous in this situation? She just, she, I think she understa understands that uh, Sadie kind of came before the, the marriage, so. Right, and she, and of course the cat can't use your credit card, so I suppose she gets Not her own Not that I back. know of. <laughs> <laughs> the British love their animals to the point of obsession and I definitely think that John is the poster boy for the uh, American contingent of mad cat people. All right then, John, well, I'm gonna take you now and we'll start doing the blood pressure and the bloods, but I will be looking after your beloved. Come on then, I know, I know. You love your daddy, don't you? Yeah. Of course, she's 18. She isn't gonna last forever. Uh, and today is all about finding out how long she might last for. All right, I'll get as much information as quick as I can for you, okay? Okay. See you in a bit. Hey guys, I've got hello. John's mistress here. We oh, need to hello. treat her very, very delicately. Hi, She's lost quite a bit of weight of late, so we're just gonna look into that a bit. You know, it's funny when I'm consulting with John and Sadie is that you almost feel like you shouldn't be in the room, like you're like, you're like the third wheel. <laughs> you know? There's so much love between the two of them. <laughs> yeah, so I need to make sure that she is uh, passed back to him in, in an equal state. Indeed. Of love and devotion. Dedicated dad John is not going anywhere. 
He's just hoping Sadie makes it through to her milestone 18th birthday. It's tough seeing what she's going through now. I can't imagine her being gone. I mean, she's been in my life longer than my wife. And if a cat of 18, or hopefully 19 or 20 years, when she's gone, it'll, it'll, it'll be devastating. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, just try this blood pressure out. The conditions in Sadie's case most likely are going to be kidney disease um, in the form of renal failure where the kidneys fail to function as well as they used to. Not too high at 130, that's perfect. Hypothyroidism is the next possibility and that is basically where a cat produces an excessive amount of thyroid hormone. Jeff, good girl. Good girl. Usually because they've got a benign growth that's growing on their good thyroid girl. gland in their neck. Done. What a good girl. And that basically drives their metabolic rate very, very fast. So they eat for England and yet lose weight. Sodium potassium ratio is normal. Good, good. Is pretty good. For a 17 so, year old. Good results to pass back to John. Sadie, so I don't think you're gonna be impressed with the lifestyle changes that I'm gonna implement, but I think it will help you get to that 18th birthday. It's a massive relief today for me to find out that Sadie's health is intact. There we go, here's there Daddy. Is. Hey baby. There you oh, go. Hey, All right, so she was so, so good, incredibly good. And the news is good. Okay, so, great. Of course, we have taken into account she has lost the amount of weight she's lost. Yeah. So we do need to keep a very close eye on your lady, but <laughs> her kidneys are functioning not too badly. Okay. Uh, and she doesn't have hypothyroidism. So oh, wonderful. So far, good so news. very good. And one thing we are gonna have to do is to just change her lifestyle a little. So what we're gonna do is enact a new type of food that'll okay. just bring down the amount of protein she consumes, just brings down the amount of work the kidneys have to do as well. So with that simple lifestyle change of changing the food that she's eating, I think that Sadie will absolutely breeze through to that 18th birthday. And I don't think though that she can really drink a pint, but John and I are more than happy to enjoy it for her. Okay, thanks, see you soon. See you soon, okay, all the best. Thanks. Bye bye. Good girl. Happy birthday, Sadie. And Sadie has made it to her big birthday milestone. Is that tasty? John's invited Scott to the celebration. Oh, I felt incredibly privileged to be invited to Sadie's 18th birthday. It's not very often that you get to have a beer with a client, but a beer with a client in a pub with a cat in a pram turning 18, that's special. All right, and I see you've got a nice little birthday card. Do you mind if I open it on her behalf? Oh, please do. Okay, let's have a look at Sadie. There you go, Sadie. Oh. Okay. Look. Do you want to read it? Mm -hmm. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday, Sadie. Thanks for 18 amazing years. Hoping for a few more healthy ones together. Love, mummy and daddy. Ah, is that nice? Hey, isn't that lovely? Not so happy, huh? Yeah. I'm not convinced that Sadie was particularly happy with me being at the pub with John, her beloved. Quite frankly, I think she would have ditched the beer and the pub for a lovely snuggle back at home, listening to just the two of us. Cheers. There you go, cheers. Happy 18th birthday. Thank you, hey. happy 18th birthday, Sadie. Good girl. It's been yeah. a good run. Very good. Number two. Hello there. Hello. You're here to see Chris this morning? Yes, we'd like him to have a look at our cat. Okay, a little kitty cat. Can I have a little look? Yes, certainly. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little unusual. This is definitely a first for the Bondi Clinic. That is just, that's made my day, made my week. Donna and Amanda from the animal rescue group Lottle have brought in a very unusual patient for Chris to examine. We wanted Dr Chris to give her her first health check. We thought she's a very special animal, we wanted her to see a very special vet. So, and we thought it'd be a, a lovely surprise for him as well. All right, so Zambi, right? That's correct, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of cats through the door here. I mean, Persians, Himalayans, Burmese, Burmans, we get a lot. Not this kind of cat, though. You are just a little bit special. Come here. Come on. This is about as good as it gets. 
I kind of thought we'd seen almost everything here at the Bondi Clinic. No, we've never had a lion before. It's just something else. That is an African name. They're from Lottel, a specialised welfare home for retired zoo and circus animals. I think Dr Chris was extremely surprised when he saw Sammy. No, he didn't. No. Oh no, trust me, he did. He was not expecting a lion cub to come out of that little carrier. So, I guess the question is, <laughs> how? How do you have her and, and what is she doing in here now? Her mother, uh, Tansa, uh, was acting a bit strange with her. Being the first time mum, she was picking her up a lot, pacing back and forth in the den, wanting to take her out into the big enclosure. So you just, she just showed quite anxious behaviour, did she? Yeah, very anxious. Yeah. She seemed a little stressed. We, we just got too worried, so we thought it was in her best interest to be hand-reared yeah, with us. absolutely. When Zambi's mother threatened to harm her, Donna and Amanda became the cubs' surrogate mums. There's no doubt that Donna has done the right thing in taking Zambi away from her mother. It's not ideal, but the reality is, kept in that situation, the risk of injury just becomes too great. My hope is that you've got her away from mum in time and, and we can transition her into, I guess, her, her new life now. Yes, yes. The first priority really is to establish that she is healthy. She's gone through a lot, so ensuring she's at a good point now can set her up for the rest of her life. I think this is the only line I'd let bite my finger. Her heart sounds good. Oh, excellent. Yeah, heart sounds no nice, and, <laughs> nice and strong. It's a really critical time right now because without the antibodies coming in from her mother's milk, she is at risk of infection. And that can be from bacterial infections or it can be from viruses. So what I would actually like to do today is give her a vaccination. Okay, her first vaccine. Yeah. We're really throwing out the rule book by giving Zambi her vaccination at four weeks of age, but I wouldn't figure myself if she got an infection now that could have been prevented by a vaccination. It's a risk we have to take. I'll give her my pacifying finger. <laughs> good girl, good girl. <coughs> oh, here we go. There she's go. suckling. Good girl. Oh. Okay, so that's going to make us a little bit more relaxed about her being protected from infection. Yes. The other thing she needs is something you can't give in a bottle or in a needle, and that's socialisation. With all this focus on how healthy Zambi is medically, it's easy to forget her social needs, which are just as important. She needs to learn to be a lion. If she's not in a pride, because yes. she's not with a mother, that's where it becomes a bit tricky for her. But what you can do and this isn't easy, what you can do is actually give her a pride of her own. She can't go into lions because they would probably tear her apart. But what we can do is try to find animals that will accept her yet still have that, that team environment. What I'm talking about are dogs. Yes. I think we might have the dog. Let me give her a go. I know, I know which one you're thinking of, Sabi. Yeah. What's Sabi? She's a Labrador. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's... Yeah, she keeps everyone else in line at home, yeah. so, I mean, we could give it a go. When Amanda tells me that her dog is a Labrador, my eyes light up. We are talking about the most perfect surrogate out there, mainly because they're obliging, they're understanding, they're patient, and they're very loving. It's a little bit crazy. I know it sounds a bit weird, but there are situations where this has been done around the world, and, and it has worked very well. But there's no guarantees. No. She could turn her nose up and say, no. Nope. Yeah. Not dealing with that. Giving Zambi a surrogate mum in the form of a Labrador could potentially be the greatest thing for her. But sometimes these things don't go to plan. I need to be out there to make sure this doesn't go badly. How are you going? Oh. It's like Chris. Got some of the relatives over here. Huh? It is. Thanks for coming out. We really right. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no worries. Chris is at the Lottel Animal Rescue Centre in Western Sydney. He has a left field idea on how to help four week old Zambi. All right, should we go and introduce little Zambi to the new mum? Yes, let's, let's do, let's do right. it. My plan is to do something that seems a little bit strange at first. We're going to try to give Zambi a new mother in the form of a Labrador. What I'm thinking is I'd love to meet 
our new mum first without Zambi being around. Uh -huh. So something I want to try that I think is going to ease this introduction. Why don't you take Chris to meet Zabi? And I'll take her baby. Oh, it's all right. Which way is she? Yeah, she's just up here. Who's he going to be, huh? There's no shortage of volunteers for the surrogate role. Here she is, here. She's, she's in there? Yep. But one special lab has been singled out. Calling Sabi. Sabi? Good girl. Here we go. <laughs> That's a good start. Labradors Sabi's are known for their maternal instincts, and Chris has big plans for Sabi. The hope here is that we can create the feeling of a pride of lions. How we're going to do that, though, I haven't told the girls. There is a bit of a trick here. Dogs make up their mind about things as much on the scent of them as they do on the sight of them. Okay. So, uh -huh. that's where this comes in handy. So what we're going to do is take Zabi's scent yep. from her body and put it on Zambi. So okay. when she smells Zambi, she's going to go, ooh, that cologne is strangely familiar. This is the best part of she's the day. She's loving it. it. Huh? This whole motherhood <laughs> thing, it's not seeming too bad, is it? Okay. Let's have the towel started. Oh, wow. So the towel is now. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. Potent. It's rank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Donna, I think we're ready. Okay, so my plan is, this is covered in Sabi scent. Oh. What I'm gonna do is rub this all over Zambi. Uh -huh. So we're essentially trying to fool Sabi into thinking Zambi is a liner door. A liner door, I love it. Part line, part yeah. Labrador. Okay. Oh, it's all right. I don't like that. <laughs> Zambi isn't too sure about suddenly smelling like a Labrador, but Chris is hoping his gamble will work. Right now, all the groundwork has been laid. We have Zambi, who smells like a dog. We have Sabi, who looks like being the perfect mother. I'm excited about how this goes, but at the same time, I'm a little bit wary. This was my idea. If this doesn't go well, I could be leaving here in a hurry. So just remember to take it nice and slow. Obviously Zambi's okay. never really seen one like Sabi before and Sabi's never seen one like Zambi before. So we'll just try to go in nice and slowly. Hey, and just be nice and positive, hey. He's hoping Sabi the Labrador will become mum to this four week old lion cub. I am anxious about this. It could work one way or the other, and Sabi could not want anything to do with the cub at all, or her maternal instincts might kick in, hopefully, and it could all turn out beautifully. There we go. Oh, just nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just licks, just licks. There we go. There's certainly no, no stress or anxiety there. That's, that's a full-on first meeting, but that is a a successful gentle, first gentle. meeting. Gentle, <laughs> she's just little, she's just little. I could tell that Sabi had love to give, but just how much love to give, that was a surprise. But what I find amazing is that she's, she's looked at Zambi and hasn't seen a lion, she's seen one of hers almost, that, that needs help. Oh, good girl. I mean, this is a fantastic result, Chris. It's extraordinary. I think Chris's idea with the scented cloth helped out lots. She just jumped straight in there and just started being a mother to her. So as a first meeting, that really couldn't have gone any better. Sabi and Zambi will spend the next few months living together. The hope is Sabi will teach Zambi how to live in a pack and set her up for the rest of her life. After such an enthusiastic first meeting between Sabi and Zambi, it'd be rude not to come back and see how this relationship develops. A little girl. <laughs> how are you? Wow, what a greeting. <laughs> when I first see Zambi running towards me, I'm thinking, oh, she's grown up. A bit bigger than last time? Just a little. <laughs> now Zambi is five months old, Chris wants to see just how his left field idea of having Sabi the Labrador raise the cub has worked out. Oh, hello. The whole family's here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, was she the mother we hoped she would be? Oh, she's been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, she's been toileting her for us. Um, 
She keeps her company, sleeps with her. She's making a growl like a lion. <laughs> See, she has See, picked, up, picked from... up a few things. <laughs> Sabi's a great mum. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for any better. She looks after her, she sleeps with her, and she's very protective of her. She is the best mum ever. Sabi, you gotta say, we took a punt on you, <laughs> huh? We really took a chance on you. We probably asked a lot more of you than one should ever ask of a dog. But you delivered, didn't you? Sure did. Bringing Labradors and lions together was always going to be a calculated risk, but it couldn't have gone better. Shall we have a little look at you? Go on. Go over here. Go over here. <laughs> See, now look what happens. Huh? Now you can't leave with it attached to me. Thank you. Oh, this is a great game, isn't it? Huh? It's a I, perfect I knew game. this was going to turn into yeah. fun and games. <laughs> oh, so when you chew it, I don't hear your heart, I just hear your chewing. No. She sounds good. Oh. Good. Yeah. You've been very cooperative now, aren't you? We well, do need to talk about one thing. This may not go down too well, so I'm going to break it to you slowly. It's vaccination time. So these are often the times where they remind you they are alive. <laughs> <laughs> not a dog after all. Perfect. Perfect. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> It's a big relief, she's in great health. But we must say, Sabi's done a wonderful job. Yeah, great. Yeah, she's fabulous. It worked a treat that we could put Zambi with the Labradors. It would have been really hard for a human to take over that role as her mum. <laughs> <laughs> They've just been so good to her. I couldn't have asked for any better. And this week's number one. Ah. I'm in the Barossa Valley in South Australia now. Most people when they come here take some time out and sample some of the region's finest, but none of that for me. I'm here to see a little lamb who's in a bit of trouble. Ah. Take a look at this. That is amazing. You know, this is, this is slightly strange, don't you? Well, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> it's amazing. How are you? Yeah, it's Julie. Good. Though. Yeah, hi, Chris. Chris, how are you? You must be Zoe. Hello. This is Lammy, and she's five weeks old now. Julie is concerned about Lammy, a little orphan that has formed an unusual relationship with Zoe the Dalmatian. Life well, got a bit confusing, isn't it? No, thank you. Yes. I'm not. Just, just checking her out, that's all. How old was she when Mum walked away? I think she would have been about half an hour old. Really? Mm. Was that soon? Mm. The first animal that she saw was the dog. <laughs> so she thought that was her mother. She literally joined the dots? Yes, yes. And, and went, OK, that must be Mum. And I just thought it was so very unusual to see a spotted lamb. It just looked like a Dalmatian puppy to me. I can honestly say I've never, ever seen anything like this in my entire veterinary career. This is so bizarre, yet so incredibly fascinating at the same time. Zoe happened to be in season at the exact moment that Lammy was abandoned. So with Zoe having all those hormones like progesterone in her system screaming out for her to become a mother, all of a sudden Lammy appeared and Zoe could become a mother. But we're talking about one in 10,000 chances here combining and producing this incredible situation. The one worry I've got is that she never suckled from her mother. So what I wouldn't mind doing is just having a bit of a look over her now, just to see how healthy she is. And from there, just make sure that everything's going along OK. When a lamb's born, the mother's udder is full of something we call colostrum, which is a milk that's really rich in fat high in energy, but most importantly, it's got a lot of antibodies in it. And those antibodies go straight into the lamb the moment this milk is drunk and provide immediate protection. And that protection lasts for weeks and months. Without it, she just does not have any sort of immunity. The first little infection that comes along, it could kill her. So what I need is a very generous sheep who's actually going to give a donation of some blood. And you'll catch it? Yep. You'll attempt to catch it? That's the plan. 
OK. The plan is that we're going to find a ewe, a mother sheep that has a lamb. Now, what makes her special is that she has a lot of antibodies in her system right now. If we then draw out some blood and let that blood settle, I can actually take the antibodies out of that blood and inject them straight into Lammy. <laughs> Lammy's at a disadvantage in the future if she was to get an infection. She has no resistance to fight that, so any assistance that Chris can give her with this blood procedure, I'm really happy to go along with it. Right. This is the bit you're excited about, isn't it? I'm, I'm going to watch you. Watch and learn. It's a good plan. It's a great plan. But it's a plan that has a small hitch in that I need to catch the sheep to get that blood sample. Not going to be easy. So, Chris, you're looking for the one on the left, that little one, that little innocent-looking sheep. And that's her lamb on the ground in front of her. She looks so slow. She was the last one to lamb, so she would have the freshest amount of milk in her. To be honest, it was a miss. Got one hand in there. She was gone. She was fast. She was too good on the day, but... Did you land in any manure? No, unfortunately not. No, you'd like that. Ah! Let's not try to sugarcoat it. It wasn't pretty. She was too speedy. It takes a real man to say that, but I was beaten by a mother sheep with a lamb. The lamb probably beat me as well when it's all said and done. Come on, guys. In the Barossa Valley, Chris needs to give the orphaned lamb an important transfusion of antibodies to boost her immunity. Good girls. But first, he has to catch a blood donor. Could have told me about that before. <laughs> I told you I had a secret weapon. It's well, called a white bucket. You're smirking at me, getting me to try to tackle these poor, innocent mothers. Go and on. you had this all... Go on, then. I thought I'd let you have an attempt. Hey, guys. I know. Come on. Very generous of you. And now we've finally caught our you. It's a lot like a human donating blood. Right, ready? Well done. Yeah. First time. <clears throat> He's a good doctor, isn't he? Hey, good girl. So just let gravity take that blood from a jugular vein yes. down the tube into this bag here. And how much are you were aiming for to collect? Look, probably half fill it. Oh wow. So you can see it's it's already running quite nicely there. Beautiful. Good girl. You ready? Yep. OK. Here we go. Ah! Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you made, you made your feelings you. very clear, didn't you? Thank you for mm. coming to visit my farm, Dr Chris. <laughs> bon dive. I think she got a bit of a spit on me then. That's all right. Thank you, though. Good girl. Yeah, you can get up now. Nowadays, everyone talks about protein shakes and vitamin boosters and all sorts of superfoods. In Lammy's life, nothing would be more important than these few meals in this injection. So I know that just looks like blood right now, but once it settles out, we're going to be left with blood cells down the bottom and the bit we want will be at the top. Yes. So we're going to suck that out and it's almost like nature's own vaccination. It'll go in there and make the absolute world of difference to little Lammy. We've got someone else who wants to donate blood. Our donation hours have actually closed. We only take blood between four and five and you're just a little bit late. Come back tomorrow? <laughs> Thank you. Obviously the sheep around here are very kind-hearted and very generous because they're now queuing up to donate blood to Lammy. They sense a cause, they sense a lamb in need and they want to help out. <laughs> You see it's separated now. Yep. So the blood cells have gone to the bottom and this clear stuff up the top is what we need. There's plenty there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. Chris is about to give Lammy her supercharged plasma transfusion. <coughs> the orphan lamb has been raised by Zoe the Dalmatian but is vulnerable to infections because she missed out on the antibodies in her mother's milk. So that's how much we need? Yes. You can see it's nice and clear? Yes. 
And we'll go straight into lamby. It's gonna make you just like the other lambs. Huh? It's like a life injection. This injection is something pretty special. It's like a wonder drug. What it'll do to Lammy's immune system is give it this immediate boost. She'll feel so much better, but importantly, she'll be able to fend off any nasty viruses or infections that come along. All right, that's all done. You were very good. You were very good. Yeah, so that's extra protection, really. Thank you, Dr. Chris. That's all right. I mean, it, it should serve as some sort of insurance policy. Okay. And yes, she had no see. insurance policy before. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, you were so good, I think we need some sort of reward for you, don't we? Huh? Look at I've got. <laughs> that <laughs> might just do it. Do you like bottles? Are you in any way interested in, in bottles? Are they something that you at least sort of Sorry. half <laughs> partial to? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> The thing that's nagging on my mind right now is that I can make Lammy as healthy as possible for the next few months, but ultimately she needs to be a sheep, and she can't do that unless the rest of the flock accepts her. This, it's cute, but, you know, it can't go on forever. We need to teach Lammy that she's a sheep, because if she doesn't think she's a sheep, she's never going to hang out with them and never going to have a normal life after that. No. Okay, so I do have a couple of things in mind. And what is that? You're about to find out. Okay. Go on, guys. Go on. Go on. Go on. Lammy's spending so much time around Zoe, sleeping next to her and being licked by her that she smells more like a dog than she does a sheep. If we were to put her out with the flock of sheep right now, they'd smell her straight away and go, no, she's an imposter. And they could hurt her. There we go. See? That's easy, isn't it? So the most important thing right now is we take away that doggy smell and replace it with something they're going to find a little bit more acceptable. <laughs> hey, little one. I think we need you. Can we carry that? OK. <laughs> so the plan is we're going to put a little cloth inside the nappy. Put the nappy on with the tail poking through, of course. And it's going to soak up any little spills that you will probably have. The thing about lamb wee is that it's the essence of sheep. So when I take that cloth and put it on lamby, then lamby's going to smell more like a sheep than like Zoe. So now the nappy's in place, the plan is we just leave our lamb to wander around, <laughs> do what lambs do, and then we have the special ingredient in making lamby more of a sheep. OK, ready? Here you go. You don't look silly. I'm pretty sure that when Julie walks into the paddock and sees one of her lambs looking like a toddler, she might be surprised. I have a surprise for you. Come with me. These are your sheep, right? I recognise them, yes. There's now a difference with one of your sheep. It's time for Chris to reveal the second part of his lamby strategy. He's hoping he's found a way for the orphan lamb to fit in with her flock. She's been spending too much time with Zoe, her surrogate Dalmatian mother. Oh, you're kidding me. It's got a nappy on. Yeah, it's got a nappy on it. What were you thinking? I'm looking at this lamb. It's got to be some sort of joke. The wee's been collected into a little towel. That towel, then, has essence to sheep, oh to sheep, all over it. The thing about sheep is they go as much on smell as they do on looks. And even though Lammy is a lamb, she's going to smell like a dog, and that has to change. So now we'll get the nappy off and take that cloth and give Lammy a little bit of ch -ch -ch -ch. Perfume. Hmm, special perfume. OK. All right. I'm open to any unusual idea that Chris has got. Even if it means Lammy wearing an unusual perfume. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right, so take the nappy off. Yeah. So this now yeah. becomes no. Lammy's new perfume. <laughs> you test it. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right with mine. There you go, the one. Thank you, by the way. By dabbing on that smell of lamb urine, she's instantly going to start smelling like a sheep. With this lamb urine, what we do is just dab it on the shoulders, on the back there, and I hate to say it, on her face as well, on her ears. 
So now we've got Lammy smelling more like a sheep. Her training isn't over. She needs the final step, which is her learning to essentially be a sheep and be accepted by the rest of the flock. They've been looking at her, hanging around Zoe and wondering what's going on there. So the way we introduce her to the flock is very gently, because if we rush it, they could actually either try to charge her. Or hurt her. Or hurt her. Yes. Because they see her as being as much a dog as they do a sheep. <laughs> Sorry, Lammy. We're not going to get Lammy accepted into this flock today. It's going to be something that's going to take a number of weeks. But if Julie can just put Lammy into that little pen for an hour every day, they'll get to know each other, become more familiar. So when Lammy eventually goes out to the paddock with them, there'll be no problem at all. Lammy's going to act like she wants to get out there and be a sheep tomorrow, mm. you know, but you have to pull it back mm. and just do it very gently because if you don't, then if you rush it, mm. so many things can go wrong. I think we'll call them baby steps. <laughs> Lammy steps. <laughs> this is good though. All right. The great thing about these solutions is that whilst it's allowing Lammy to go back with a flock of sheep, it's not ending the relationship with Zoe. Their lives will be separate, but not too far apart. I think it's very special that Dr Chris, the Bondi vet's come to visit me in the Brossa Valley and I'm really happy that he's made the effort and I think it, we've all learned a lot from it. And you can't go home without a glass of red. Thank you for coming. So you'd never ask. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, I'm Dr Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.